Howdy, hi, everyone. My name is Harry LeFin from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I moved up here from Georgia after the Civil War and found work in Henry Hines Food Factory. I've been asked to tell you a bit about the world in my day. It's the year 1878, and life nowadays is a reflection of the ever faster growing industrialization. The steam engine has conquered Europe and America, and thanks to trains and steamships, a true mass migration is occurring. 30 million people will move from Europe to the United States of America this century in search for a better life. Things in Europe aren't exactly good. This century counts over 40 wars and social conflicts are popping up everywhere due to the miserable living circumstances. A guy named Karl Marx has been calling for a revolution by the workers against their bosses and wants the state to run everything. The situation is so bad that his ideas are well received by the crowd. It's not much better here in the U.S., by the way. The Civil War still lies freshly in our memories, and the economic recession, known as the 1873 Panic, has left many a man unemployed and their families hungry. Everybody knows this, because we can read it in the now mass-produced newspapers and magazines. Within 20 years since that Morse fellow invented his telegraph, news travels across the country and even across the ocean in a matter of seconds. The newspapers are full of gossip, scandals, war, crime, love, and of course, the new inventions that occur every day of the week and exceed our highest expectations time and time again. Luxury sure isn't for everyone, but for those who can afford it, there is plenty to choose from. The latest innovations are to be admired at world exhibitions, the first of which was held in 1851 after the success of the industrial expositions held in Europe since 1844. They serve as an excellent means of showing the world what's possible these days and guarantee a jaw-dropping experience. My boss has a stand at the one that just started in Philadelphia. It's the first World Expo to be held here in the States, and it's expected to draw over 10 million visitors before it finishes in November. Amidst the beautifully dressed ladies, I'm marveling at novelties such as Alexander Graham Bell's telephone. Remington's typewriter, Wallace Farmer's electric dynamo, which is said to be a precursor to electric lighting, and I'm showing the world my boss's newest product, a tomato sauce everybody likes on everything. He's named it Ketchup. I didn't see the previous expositions in London and Paris, but thanks to yet another great invention, that of the photograph, I feel like I have been there. Professional photographers carry their equipment all around the globe these days and allow us to really see the world from the comfort of our armchairs. Amazing. I'm quite proud of my collection of small photographs, a thing that blew over from Europe. The French call it carte de visite. It's the small pictures of people that have made of themselves. I have an extensive collection of cards picturing all kinds of famous people, heads of state, actors and actresses, and even one of the convicted killer, J.B. Trotman. Don't tell my wife, but I also have a private collection of carte de visite from actresses who have posed for the camera in rather unveiling outfits. 